Welcome to the summit about what is wholeness here and now. And I have the pleasure to introduce you to Rick Barrett. Hi. Hi. <laughs> A real honor to be here, Susan. Good, thank you. <laughs> and I'm, yeah, the reason why you're here is because I read your book. I've also been to, been to an online event with you, but I read your book, uh, Finding You in the World of It. And can you show it to me there? Because, oh, sure. Yeah. Here's uh, Finding You in a World of It. There we go. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I like your cover. It's, my it's daughter, gorgeous. my daughter drew that. So, uh, oh really? Wow! It's uh, yeah, it's quite uh, quite lovely. You can see the uh, you know the the face there and all the its around and and the the emerging face there in in between the you know the authentic self that arises in that sea mm -hmm. of of uh, objectivity. Yeah. Yeah, and that's exactly what your book is about too, right? And uh, you're also a Tai Chi master, and for what forty years, and you've been teaching that as well. And you're also a speaker, and, and then you writer. You also have another book, and uh, yeah. So I'm excited to explore a little bit with you now. For Wonderful. Like Wonderful. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, in your book, what really got to me, yeah, was the it, like the world of it, and all these objects and things that we seem to get lost in and identify with. So you, you go into depth with that. And, and also, what, what are you? If you're not the world of it, what, what are you? Or are you all of it? So yeah, maybe you can um, take over from here. Sure. Uh, well, first of all, let me just give some credit to my inspiration for this. It was uh, Martin Buber's I and Thou which is a book published about a hundred years ago. And it, for me, it's, it's the most important book of the 20th century. And in it, Martin Buber says that in, in our conscious state, we have this, it's a, you're either relating to the world as an experience, that is something that you are taking in through your senses and coming up with an idea about what just happened, telling a story basically, or else you are engaging another I to you. That is, you are meeting them with your whole being in a way that is objectless. And so the two different ways, the way I express it in, in, in my book is like two different operating systems that we, that we use when, when we are uh, engaging with awareness. And one is that it is a object-based consciousness. That is, when the conscious mind is active, you are thinking and you are creating a representation of the world. You're saying, Whatever I'm, whatever is out there, I am processing it through my nervous system and coming up with an idea of this is how I'm going to explain whatever happens. We're taking the chaos of all this information that's coming into our senses and we're putting it into a context that is meaningful to us. And we're updating that moment by moment. There's part of the brain that's called the default mode network, which is tasked with the job of updating your narrative moment by moment. That's just a very small part of the brain, but it kind of takes over where we're always in our story. And consequently, we are always looking at the world as full of objects. And when you do, anytime you see, and this is something Buber makes a, a, an important point about, is that anytime you see something as an object, you yourself become an object. Anytime you say that, that thing, anytime you express an idea, you think a thought or have a, uh, uh, any kind of notion at all, you are creating a symbolic representation of the world, which is what makes us human. It's the most human of things that we do is to tell a story. And that's how we share information and how we get other humans involved in the conversation. But the problem comes whenever we get confused between the story about something and the thing itself. 
So just like telling a story about eating pizza is not the same thing as eating pizza. You know, it's a, uh, there is a, there, there's a, a separation. The intellect creates a distance between the thing that is thought about and the object itself. And so whenever you're talking about what is, um, the what is is that which is happening prior to the experiencing, prior to the story. Before we think about it, what do we got? So it's like if you, uh, you get a, a, you see a flash of red. I just saw a flash of red out my window and there was a cardinal there. So before it became a cardinal on the, uh, on the bird feeder, it was a flash of red. And before it became a flash of red, it was just some sensations coming in, some perceptions that were coming in. And there is a process that we go through when we go from the raw now, the raw what is, to the experience, which then says, oh, I put that in context. Car cardinal, that's a, that's a red bird. And, and oh, I saw other cardinals here. And the come every, and then the story kicks in. When we get lost in the story, we get moved farther and farther from the present moment. Yeah. And whenever we get into the present moment, we are able to then more resonate with what is happening now. Yeah. So, so it's like we're more in coherence with what's actually going on, you could yes. say, yeah. Yes, so you go out of resonance and when you go out of resonance, that's fine because that's how we think of things. Anytime I'm writing, I'm not relating to the world as much as I am relating to my thoughts. And that's, that's how we get stuff done. But we want to be able to shift between the two. We want to be able to consciously, talk, I call it toggling. That is like you're flipping a switch. You say, oh, I'm in, the, I'm in my rational mind right now thinking about stuff. Or flip the switch and say, I'm in my relating state right now. And I'm being here with what is going on. And that toggling can happen very rapidly. You can happen, happen many, many times a second because we have that capacity whenever we are in that expanded state to be able to shift back and forth very quickly. It's recognizing when you are doing it, when you are stuck in those thought loops. And a lot of people complain to me, I, you know, I do a lot of energy healing and people say, I can't get out of my head. My, my thoughts are just this constant stream, it's a stream of consciousness and I can't get out of it. The thoughts come one after the other. And they're unable to find the gap between thoughts mm -hmm. because it is in that gap between thoughts that, as Melarepa said, it was, uh, that is where the eternal wisdom shines through continuously. That is where we find that, that spiritual wisdom that animates our lives. Yeah, between the thoughts. I like that, the, the gap. The gap it's between the thoughts, yeah. Yeah. So it's the stillness, you could say, it's the, yeah, the no thinking, the stillness of just being. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And, and that's also uh, in Tai Chi, for example, you, you, uh, you write about how you, it's the stillness point and the movement. And it's like the stillness is in the movement and the movement is in the stillness. And so it sounds very wholesome. Because it sounds like it's, oh, it's the same, right? It's very interesting because there's a, um, if you take a, an example of a pendulum, a pendulum swings back and forth, like say a grandfather clock, right? It swings back and forth in a very fixed path. It, and it, if you look at it from, as an experience, if you look at it intellectually from, from a distance, you see a continuous motion. It's just rocking back and forth, it's continuous. But there is at, at, as it approaches the end of its run, it slows down. The, the velocity slows down to zero. By the time it reaches the end of its run, it's, it's, the velocity is zero. At the same time, there's a turnaround where it heads back the other direction. At that zero point, that is where the energy in the system is at its maximum. In other words, the the energy that's going to take the, the, the pendulum back in the other direction is at its maximum at that still point. It's also 
that still point lasts zero time. Okay. So you, when you are in that still point, there is zero time occurring. There's, and and but you can reach. You can actually, with with the benefit of your mind, you can enter into that still point and prolong it, so that you are in that gap at that point. And that is where you are energizing the system. So just as the pendulum stores, uh, gets its maximum energy and maximum energy potential is in that moment. Similarly, when we find the still points in our, not only our movements, but also in our thoughts, that is when we fill up with energy, when we fill up with vitality. That's where we go back to the spiritual well and, and drink deep from the uh, from the spiritual well yeah that sounds nice <laughs> <laughs> and that's also so when when you are doing that you are also thinking but you are at the same time still like you are not caught in the thinking you just kind of you can you when i say toggle it means you can flip it on and off you can think or not think in any moment you are in control of your thinking mechanism so a lot of people confuse their themselves, their identity, their self with their thoughts. And, but your, your, the thinking mechanism that it's a very small part of the brain is actually a very, you know, it's not you, it's something that you use. And if you, if we can just quiet it down and find that gap between thoughts, and allow the other parts of the brain to open up and then the whole nervous system and then the field that, that gets produced, there's a mind field that gets produced by those all those interactions. Whenever we do that, we are able to access a lot more of our potential than if we are stuck in that identification with our thoughts. Yeah, okay, yeah. Um, oh, maybe we can stop for a second here. Just uh, do, do you have something on on the computer that makes trying, noise? Trying to, it, it seems to be signaling me. Uh, what is it? Uh, I have to turn oh. some alert off or something. Yeah, because I, I heard it before as well. So I was just thinking. Maybe, yeah, yeah. That um, let me just uh, edit this little part out. So it's no. Let problem. me let me uh, go to my system and turn it off. Uh, whatever. Uh, sounds. Da, 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 da. There's a, uh, 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 uh. Sorry about that. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. Okay. So then, I'll I'll go with another question then um, from here. So, um, yeah. So you you talk about you talk about um, right. yeah the entrance yeah. Yeah, so there is, there is uh, in your book, you also talk about the it trans, like the trans, and that, that is that trans where you're lost in your thoughts, right? And, right. and, um, and then so you're kind of um, pulling yourself out of that trans. Right. And, and then you're, you are the wholeness of you, not just the, the thinking part of you, but as you said, it, it's like the whole nervous system, the whole body, you access a whole different dimension of yourself. Yes. I guess, yeah. And that, that's also, what, what is that other dimension of yourself that you access? Yeah. So the, um, when we're in the it trance, that is we don't, we're unaware that these thoughts are being, are taking us over basically. They're, we're being run by our thoughts. Once we step outside of that, once we move to the gap between thoughts, not just once, but learn to do it easily and readily and volitionally, then we are then able to control that thinking apparatus so we can direct it wherever we want. It's not, we're not being overcome by old patterns, you know, thought loops that keep keep running around. And more importantly, we're no longer dominated by the need to, to convert experience, 
converts the now into experience, into saying, immediately trying to create a story out of something. So let's, for example, let's say I, I have a sip of coffee and my, rather than just being there with the coffee and tasting it and just and resonating with the coffee, I mean to say, it's not bad, but it's not as good as the cup of coffee I had earlier today. And I wonder what happened, I uh, wonder why that is so. And I immediately start to go into a, an, an analysis of the coffee rather than just being there with the coffee. Both are valid, both are valid ways of being in the world. It certainly is a good idea to be able to differentiate and compare and things like that, but not if it's compulsive. If it's something that I have to do, that, you know, there's a, that's when the it mind has taken over. It has the it trance has taken over. So the ability to shift between that it mind, which is that object-based consciousness, that is when everything becomes an object, including me, and I'm thinking about me in this whole relationship. And whenever I move beyond that and into an IU relational mode, that's where I go into a non-objective awareness. And that is that gap between thoughts. We're in a non-objective. There are no objects when I relate to you wholly with my whole being. And, you know, you initiated, uh, you, you said that this is about wholeness. And, and, and that's where it really starts. We have to be able to, to be able to shift into that mode. We have to be able to go into a state of wholeness. And that's a lifetime journey for a lot of people, but it doesn't have to be that. In fact, it's a starting point for the conversation for wherever I am meeting you with my whole being, that means I have to be in a state of wholeness. I have to, I'm not thinking about me and, and, and creating Rick as an object. I am actually, I'm relating to you non-objectively at that point. So the, in, in meeting, which is a term that I use for, for this, and it kind of comes from a boober, quote where he says that, you know, it all begins with meeting. And, and that is, meeting is where you're able to do that toggling between objective thinking, which allows you to establish the context for the conversation, know what we're talking about, and, and but also being able to shift quickly into where my entire attention is in engaging with you non-objectively. And when that happens, magic happens. And we've all had that experience where you're talking with an old friend and like, holy smokes, it's three o'clock in the morning. How did it, how did it get to be here? Mm -hmm. And, uh, <laughs> you know, it's the time just disappears whenever we're in that, in, we're in a, that meeting state. It's not that we're drifting off into a, uh, uh, a state of transcendence where we're disconnected from the whole world. We're not, it's not nothing, it's not a zero, it's what is. We're actually resonating with what is. And I believe, you know, you had, you had asked something, uh, I think in your email, you know, about what is it beyond the ego? And I think a real important part of this whole conversation is establishing that the, e what the ego is. And because a lot of people see it as an enemy. You know, there's, there are spiritual traditions which say, you know, we must exterminate the ego. We must get rid of, there is no self. There is just, we must get rid of that because that's, it's a lie. It's, it's an illusion. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and, but I, I prefer to think of ego in its, in its original Freudian term, which is the I. He called it das S. It was only later when it was translated into English that it became the ego. They, they used a Latin term for what Freud said, which was das S, or uh, das S, which is uh, um, das ich, I'm sorry, das ich, uh, which is the I, and das S is the uh, the it. So uh, and, uh, ego was translated from, from uh, das ich, which means the I. And 
learning to differentiate between the I and the it is was like what his, what he was about. And if we see the ego as a, a neutral term, all it really means is what do I think I am? You know, who or what do I think I am? And that's an essential part of functioning as a human being. If you don't know who you are, if you have no idea who you are, you're going to have a hard time getting through your day. And even though, even if we can get to those gaps between thoughts where we're not terribly concerned about it, we still want to be able to know that where did I park my car and what is my name? And <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we, <laughs> yeah, we want to be able to, to have these, these, we want to have a story to go back to that more or less accurately describes who and what I am. And that is our ego. So even if my ego, even if my description of myself is I'm a beam of light, I am a, uh, I am pure awareness or whatever it is, you know, the story, I am one with the universe. That every time we say I, we're, we're talking about ego there. Mm -hmm. And that is, and I think it's, it, it, it needs to be considered in its neutral form as now, this is just this is a marker that lets us know where I am in the game. So like, you know, when you're playing Monopoly and like, which, which, which of the pieces you're going to choose is your marker, because that becomes you. But just do not confuse the qualities and thoughts about you with what you actually are, because what you are is beyond anything that you can put into words anything you can think about, anything you can imagine, you are much, much more uh, intricate, wonderful, vast, and, and you know, rapturous than, than all that. Yeah. Yeah, it, like the wholeness of us is actually much more than, than what we normally really um, experience, I guess. Uh, like, is it something you can experience? It, yes. It, yeah. You can experience wholeness. And in fact, it's something that, you know, uh, the something you picked up from the, uh, you know, from reading Finding You, it's that if, if you know, people were to, right, even right now, just join in with it, you just take your index finger and you point your index finger like very lightly as if you're going to flip a light switch and you feel into that finger. You point and feel into that finger. Yeah. <laughs> Take a deep breath, and in that moment, you enter the gap between thoughts, because you shifted out of the part of the brain that is thinking and into the part that is feeling. And in doing that, you create a coherence, a whole brain coherence whenever you do that, and which then brings the whole body mind into a state of coherence. And in that state, you are in a state of wholeness for the moment. And it's because you're not thinking about yourself as an object. You are just, it's just now. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. It's, it's like you, you uh, like the embodiment, right? It, it becomes suddenly the wholeness in the body of you. You are aware, you're fully here, or, uh, but not in a way of abstraction, but just yes. in a way of being. Yeah really being present right like really being available present yeah yes yes yeah but there's also because i i'm i'm all into experiences i love experiences like all kinds of but usually we people and go for hike in nature or if there's yeah but uh if go to festivals or whatever um i really like experiences where it feels very alive right and right so I'm not so much into material stuff where because it it seems kind of dead to me. I like something that's more alive, like people or nature, plants and water. Or it just seems more alive than than, for example, um, a lamp, right? <laughs> or a nice stereo or a nice car. It it just doesn't seem as alive. But is there something about that 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 uh, you know people, animals? plants, nature, is it, does it have like a, a different aliveness about it? And, and that's why I, I think you're, 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 you're right on the money there. That yeah. it is that aliveness. There's so there is a, a transition 
from that inert material and whenever there is a when something is alive and it's like there is um you know one way of thinking of it is that whenever there in an aliveness there is a quality of coherence that is the different parts that assemble something cohere in a way that allow it to assume its own identity and there is a there's a shift there which what you know we call spirit a lot, a lot of the time just because it's you know that we need to differentiate between say a dead body and a live one there's something that something that happens there and uh, that that difference we call spirit and um whenever we are resonating with as you say like a uh, like a tree you know whenever whenever you meet a tree with your whole being you're not just saying oh i think that's a juniper and uh, you know the juniper is a uh, species of tree blah 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 where you that's it mind stuff it's like no no there you are and you're you're resonating with it. i'm a i'm a tree hugger i like you know i like to go up and i like to to uh, to touch them. Mm -hmm. I remember, you know, when I was training for martial arts tournaments, I would use trees as a, as a way of gathering, you know, energies that I couldn't get otherwise. I would just go up and I would just press against them and feel that the depth of their root. And that was a very important part of my training was to, to feel into the root that, uh, that the tree had, how deep that went. And like, you know, how much of that could I absorb at a nonverbal level? And I was able to get quite a bit, you know, from that. I was able to, like, understand things that I could not possibly get by reading a book, say. And whatever it is, what, anytime we meet something with our whole being, they do not have to necessarily meet us back. That thing or person does not have to meet us, meet us back. We can meet someone or something and just by the fact that we are doing it we are creating a different condition by doing that we are bringing a certain level of awareness to the event that cannot occur if you're in a purely intellectual state if you're stuck in an it trance yeah you need uh, you need to be able to go out there so when you're talking about going out in nature there's a lot of voices out there that are talking to you at a pre-language level. They're, you're resonating with, with energy and information, which is so vast that if you could, if you could tune into all of it, you would, it would drive you insane because you, you could not handle that much. So luckily we have filters that allow us to only take in as much energy and information as we can tolerate at a given time. And, uh, but the more you expose yourself to it, the broader your bandwidth becomes. You're able to tolerate more energy and information. Ah, uh, yeah, oh, that, that makes sense. Yeah, I can see that how the more open you are, the more uh, somehow you you resonate with the surroundings and and it works as a, a nice coherent vibrational energy field or yeah and you probably feel everything more maybe too yeah yeah i know you also you do energy healing right i mean you're you all do energies and with your tai chi that's that's also about Kind of moving around your energies or be open to like open up for everything to happen or can you speak a little bit i do hands-on energy healing as well yeah and um you know primarily under the umbrella of polarity therapy but it includes a lot of other things craniosacral and things like that as well but the idea is again there you're tuning in primarily in a non-verbal way 
to the different energies that animate and you can become very sensitive to qualities of energy. When I first started out, it was just less or more. There's either more energy or less energy. And that was, those, those are the only two ways I could think about it. You know, where there's, oh yeah, there's more energy. Oh, there's less. But as I practiced over the decades, then I became aware of different qualities of energy. And depending on the modality that I was working with, I would be able to differentiate, let's say in the Chinese model, if you're, you're able to differentiate between, say, wood energy, which is an expansive energy. We're, we're in the season right now where we're springtime and, and with it comes this expansiveness and it's characterized in the Chinese calendar by the wood element. And you compare that to what we just came from, which was winter, which is water, which is a very yin or receptive contained kind of energy. And so that one is where you move, you're more at rest. So there's a shift from going from the very yin energy of, of, of the winter time to the expanding energy of going toward yang of, uh, of springtime, which then leads into summer, which is fire energy, which is the most, the most yang of them all. And they just kind of keep expanding, expanding outward. So learning to differentiate the different energies, not just in the Chinese model, the polarity model is, suddenly, is, a, is a bit different. But if you do that, you then are able to ask yourself in any situation, what is the appropriate energy for this situation? And then you attune to that. And that's part of the, the healing process is finding out where a person is energetically, attuning to that, and then saying, okay, what's the appropriate energy at this point to bring about the maximum healing that occurs in that, in that time? Yeah, to, to bring things into balance, maybe. Or, uh, but but that's yeah. kind of, um, that's part of health, right? That, that's part of our health, maybe to uh, have all these energies in balance and... Uh, but it's not really who we are, right? Because we're even beyond health. We are beyond, or we are more than that, right? We, we are yeah. like the, the eternal here now that never dies, that, that right. just is. And so it's, um, but it's good to also have health, good health and, and know all these energies and, um, or have somebody help us or, you know, it's, 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 um, I mean, it's life. It's all life, and it's it's nice to learn about life and how we can have a good life or a life that we flourish. And but in all that, there is that eternal awareness, loving awareness, or unconditional love, or God, or whatever we want to call it, right? Uh, presence. Uh, it's always there, no matter what, no matter how imbalanced we are, or how balanced we are or in, um, when we lose things in life and when we gain, and it's just always there. Um, and that, that's also what you talk about between the thoughts, right? The space between the thoughts. That's that is our access door. That's the doorway. Yeah, the doorway. That, that's that's the doorway to what that state you're talking about. And the, uh, I think when we talk about what is, we're talking about something which is beyond any attempt to create a state of qualities. Anyway, a quality is something that the mind, it's, it's a, the mind's way of telling a story. Let's say, you know, if you're, if you're, uh, you know, you, your story is God is good then that's, 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 it's a, a fine story and it, and it's, it's, it, that's great, but it's, it assigns a quality. So what, what's, what's this other stuff here that is not good, you know, and then you have to, you know, you have to ask that because anytime you say this, there's always a that that goes with it. There's always, you know, there's anytime you say that, it's eternal. Well, then that means that there's also got to be a finite for eternal to mean anything at all. 
so what I consider what is this wellspring of vitality of of life of energy and information whatever is beyond our any ability to tell assign it a quality you know and uh, but doesn't mean that I can't have a story that that helps me live my life better I prefer to think of the universe as a benign place a a loving universe and that that serves me very well and it it beats pants off of uh, the alternative you know and uh, uh, but whenever I am in that that gap between thoughts there's no good or bad there's no right or wrong there's no you know it's 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 just now and in that now the question comes up what else is possible you know and it's like you you're open to the field of all possibilities at that point and your capacity to comfortably navigate those possibilities the potentiality of your being which means that you're always open to the novelty of life. Yeah. You know, it's like there are no formulas that say, be this way and everything will be fine. It's like, no, no. What else is possible? How, what's another way of looking at this thing? Any statement, any, any experience, whatever, you look at it and say, oh, that's bad. Okay, maybe, maybe not. Let's say we've just been through a rather challenging year with the uh, with the pandemic, right? And that's that's terrible. But at the same time, my life has had many things that have come about it as a result of that that I would not have experienced without that without that pandemic. Mm -hmm. there, there are ways of connecting with people that I have learned, you know, over this time. I'm able to. You know, I, I, I teach uh, some Zoom classes and we get to explore. And I get to, to work with people that I would not have worked with otherwise mm -hmm. because everybody is kind of in, you know, they're taking, being respectful of the, uh, of the pandemic. So they're, so they're, they're willing to, to change their behavior. And that opens up new ways of, ex of exploring human interaction yeah yeah so it's like we adapt and in that uh, yeah then things new opportunities and yeah so it, it also it feels like when you are uh, established in that presence uh, then it's it spontaneously happens what happens right yes so, yes yeah there's a lot more sponta spontaneity in life because you have a certain confidence or faith that you know you're going to be able to to work something out you uh you you have since you have more resources available to you there is a you know there's a, a sense that oh yeah we'll figure this out whatever whatever this thing is we'll, we'll figure it out so then you you go on to the next thing and you're not as you're not filled with regret about the path not taken you're not filled with guilt about the crimes of the past you're 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 looking and say okay what now you're you're meeting the moment and saying okay what's the best this is the hand i'm i'm dealt right now what's the best i can do with this right now yeah 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 wow uh, thank you so much rick that uh, i i really enjoyed our conversation yeah. Wonderful. I am really, uh, really happy to be here. And thank you so much for, for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah. And I've got, um, I've got some, a whole bunch of videos on YouTube. You can check my YouTube channel, rickbarrett.net. And uh, also my website uh, is uh, also rickbarrett.net. If you can uh, go that I've got, I've got hundreds of blogs I've written over time. So uh, feel free to explore through that. And uh, uh uh, yeah, the website is is uh, where all. Yes. Yeah. Great. 
Yeah, I, I really appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.